dumplings in the Dutch oven won the poll, or at least for now. So we are gonna go ahead and make chicken and dumplings out in the Dutch oven. I'm using my 12 inch, eight quart, well, it, it might be an eight quart. I'm not positive if it's six or an eight, but it's big. Um, uh, and this is a Lewis and Clark limited edition Camp Chef uh, Dutch oven. We're gonna use that today. We've got a whole chicken. We've got eight cups of chicken stock that I added some dried parsley to, and I'll be adding fresh parsley that's not out here on the table at the end um, to infuse that. If you put it in too soon, you don't get the really good flavor. Plus, I like fresh parsley in my dumplings. Um, I've got fresh carrots out of the garden, an onion out of the garden, and a, a bundle and a half of organic celery because organic celery usually um, is smaller bundles. And those veggies are gonna go in after we've taken the chicken off the bone. So first things first, we gotta get this girl in the Dutch oven. And I've already rinsed this off, put my giblets in there, and uh, I've rinsed my chicken off. See if I can do this without dropping it. Perfect, ooh, it fits perfect in there. And we could have roasted a chicken too. If you guys wanna see a roast chicken where it's all brown and crispy, you better leave me a comment. Okay, so now that we've got our bird in the Dutch oven, we're gonna go ahead and cover it with our chicken stock. And this is delicious. This is actually bone broth that I opened and um, I think this will be plenty. Eight cups is gonna be plenty. And there we go. Put that over there. Now, and I don't think I'm gonna use the coals on top. Number one, it's not necessary. This is more of a soup or stew. If I was going to put the biscuits or the dumplings up there and wanted them to brown, that's a different cook. Then we use the coals on top as well. And that, I call that a chicken and biscuit bake. Mm, that's good. So I've got a ton of garlic here. Chicken soup should be healing. This has natural antibiotic properties to it. And this is organic garden, garlic out of my garden. And there was one of the whole little bulbs full. So maybe equivalent to four large cloves, maybe five. It's gonna cook and become sweet. It won't be too strong. I promise. Ooh, I can't wait. Hmm. Okay, so garlic, and then had a little olive oil, which is okay. We're gonna add a few healthy pinches of black pepper, and I may add more because this, is, I am gonna add more. This is a lot of soup that you're gonna be making. Grind up some Himalayan pink salt. And now we're gonna go ahead with poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning and chicken, especially in the fall, it just, it, it goes hand in hand. And let's see if I can take this, yeah, I can. I want more than a little bit. Probably a full teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of poultry seasoning. This, my mouth is already watering because I know how delicious this is. So I'm gonna go get a full chimney of um, coal started. And if I was gonna do the, uh, like I said, if I was gonna do like a biscuit topping on this, um, I would have a second chimney ready to start. Maybe not full, but ready to start um, as soon as I was ready to make my biscuits and then uh, go out there and put them on the lid so my biscuits could brown and cook from the top down. But again, this is a stew, if you will. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna do soft, fluffy dumplings. It's gonna be so good. So let's get this outside. I'll meet okay, you guys, so All you're right. probably wondering, what is she doing at the stove? I guess when you're served a bowl of lemons, you make lemonade. I went out to check on the coals after I had lit them and it is pouring. And it is, all my coals were pretty much snuffed out, which it's okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's very windy. It's kind of stopped raining, but it's extremely cold and very windy. You wouldn't be able to hear very well. So I decided, instead of torturing myself out there, and I can always do this 
outside for you at some other point in time. Basically, the coals are gonna be underneath the Dutch oven. And in this case, it's fire from the gas stove. And this thing is heavy, so make sure if you're putting it on your stove that it's a gas stove. Um, I wouldn't put this on an electric burner because of the legs, it wouldn't uh, have contact. But um, I certainly didn't want to transfer all this into another pot. So we're going to go ahead and cook it in the Dutch oven on top of the stove. And I apologize, we don't get to have fire and flames and all that good stuff, but I certainly don't with the wind the way it is. If I relight coals, I don't want sparks of any kind flying around and I don't want ashes in my food. So that's what we're going to do. It's on high right now. I'll turn it down when it comes up to a boil and we'll let this simmer until the chicken is tender. And I'm a firm believer, do not overcook your chicken. You will cook all the flavor out of it and you'll make it stringy. So as soon as it's tender, fall off the bone, not just pull a bone out, but you can pull it off the bone easily, it's done. And bone that chicken, set it aside, put it in the refrigerator until the end. And after you've cooked your vegetables in your broth and your chicken goes back in, then you can make your dumplings and there you go. That's how easy it is. It's easy. Even a kid can do it because I used to do it all the time. <laughs> in fact, that was one of our very favorites is my chicken and dumplings when I was a kid. So, okay, let's get this going and I'll, I'll bring you back when there's something to see. Maybe some boiling chicken. <laughs> okay, I have my broth and I want to tell you what I did with it. I have a fat separator measuring cup. I'll leave one of those in the links below because it was the best purchase I ever made. Um, you put the liquid in, it's got a little plug stopper for the spout, so none of the fat gets, or liquid gets up in there, and you let all the fat rise to the top, because chicken has a lot of fat. I mean, it's usually 18% fat if you look on the, on the package, because of the skin and the fat. And you could skin it, but I want the flavor from the fat, not the fat from the fat. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> anyway. So we've got our broth here that's almost fat free. I mean, there's a little bit, and it took some of that dried parsley out of there, which is kind of what we wanted. I boned the chicken, and here's my bone chicken. It made about four cups of bone chicken. Now I'm not putting that back in yet. We want to cook these vegetables. Okay, so all the vegetables are gonna go down in this hot broth and simmer until they're tender. And then, ooh, that's a lot of veg, but they will cook down, so um, don't get discouraged that you may not have enough room, because you will. See, it's still going to be soupy. Um, we like a ton of vegetables in our uh, chicken and dumplings. I am a celery fanatic. I can't get enough of celery. I could have it as a side dish um, every night of the week, I think, but that being said, <laughs> And we've got our fresh carrots, which are full of flavor, and some onion. And we're going to add the parsley later And the ch when we add the chicken back in. And we're also going to put fresh parsley in our dumplings. So let's go over and make our dumpling mixture. And uh, we'll move on with this recipe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is time to make our dumpling mixture. And this is very close to my biscuit recipe. I use a little less fat in this. Um, we're gonna add two and a half tablespoons of butter to two and a half, maybe two tablespoons of lard. And you could replace it for Crisco, do whatever you like, actually. About a teaspoon of salt. And we need a teaspoon, or actually a half a teaspoon, sorry, of baking soda and a teaspoon, and I use a heaping teaspoon because I want these to get puffy and delicious, of baking powder. And then we're gonna use about, oh, we'll say this is two tablespoons of chopped up fresh parsley. I've used dill in this, that's delicious as well. And we're gonna cut in our fat. Now we're gonna put in uh, cold buttermilk and this is a uh, low fat buttermilk. I just work it in. You want a sticky wet dough. Um, like you would 
start to roll out for biscuits onto a floured surface, only we're not going to roll them out. These are going to be drop biscuits, basically, in our chicken and dumplings. And it's going to be time to add back our chicken. The rest of our fresh parsley, which is about two tablespoons of fresh parsley, is going to go back in the soup. And the vegetables are now tender, but still at al dente. I don't want them overcooked. The worst thing you can do is overcook them because we're going to have this as leftovers. So, okay, we're almost there. A little bit more, not much, and I don't measure. You just need to get your dough to kind of a wet, sticky dough that holds together that we can do drop biscuits. And this is not a huge recipe. Um, tomorrow, if the dumplings are gone, I can make another batch. That's the nice thing. Or if you have a big family, you know, make a double batch of them. Sometimes they don't hold up in the liquid, so I like to keep the batches small for what we're going to manage that night and the next day, because if they fall apart, they just thicken the broth, and then we have more of a stew, which chicken stew. Okay, this is perfect. See how thick that is? It's ready to go down. This is going to go down in our uh, soup with Un and we're going to simmer it uncovered for 10 minutes and then covered for 10 minutes. So let me take you over there and we'll see what we got going on now. Okay, so you can see that I've added the chicken back in. I added the parsley in the remainder of the parsley and we've let this come back up to a simmer. Now I did have to or or add a quart and a half of water because of the bone broth and then the chicken the broth was very concentrated and the level of water goes down or your broth so I, I wanted a pretty light broth I don't want anything too heavy and concentrated and we've got a ton of food in there so now we're gonna take and we're just gonna drop biscuits drop some dumplings down now I if you want to see the um, noodle type dumpling um, done let me know in the comment section below because um, some people like that chewier noodle and my husband really enjoys these kind of dumplings but he loves noodles too. So sometimes when I have this for leftovers, I make the noodles the second day and then he's a happy guy. So leave him alone, cook them uncovered for 10 minutes like this at a low simmer and then we'll come back put the lid on and you'll see what happens and they're gonna puff up they're gonna become delicious and they're gonna be that beautiful biscuit inside that will help sop up that broth okay guys so I'm just gonna say right off the bat here um, dinners in the Dutch oven are gonna be hard because of daylight savings time it's pitch black and has been for an hour so I hope the lighting is okay our dumplings have gone 10 minutes uncovered, 10 minutes covered, and let's see what we got. Oh, don't those look fantastic. And let me tell you, the aroma wafting off of that is mmm, mmm, yum. Okay, let's see. I'm not going to dish them up yet because they're screaming hot. I turned my burner off. Let me get a fork and I'll show you what we have. If you know success, and it, oh yes, yes. See, you can kind of feel that these are a little bit firm. I really, I don't know if you can see that well. If you, oh yeah, if you kind of pull away at the top of one, it's just like a biscuit, the inside of a tender biscuit. I don't want to do that in the pot. Mmm, wait a minute, maybe I do. No, I don't want to do that in the pot. We're going to let this sit for about five, ten minutes. My husband just got home from hunting. I'm going to dish up plates, or bowls, I should say. Get some toast points uh, toasted up and... Uh... Okay guys, here's my bowl. Now this is a pretty small bowl, but this is the end result of the chicken and dumplings. It's had a chance to actually Kind of rest a little bit and cool down to where it's not hot lava and you just break into that biscuit and dumpling shall I say 
get some celery on there and get a taste test because it looks fantastic and it smells amazing. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. So good. These dumplings, like I said, they're not going to necessarily hold up till tomorrow. They end up breaking apart and thickening the stock, which is what we like. And then you can add some chewier biscuits or not chewier biscuits, but some chewier dumplings if you'd like the noodle style. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, what a comforting meal. Who doesn't want a bowl of chicken and dumplings? All right, guys. Sorry about the weather. <coughs> Couldn't have done it anyway because it's so dark out. But we'll be back next time with another delicious recipe. And I hope it inspires you to try this one for yourself. And um, 